another lesson and this time we're looking at the distributive property of division now we've already seen the distributive property of multiplication and just to remind you that was when we had a value in front of a bracket or at the back and inside we had uh, more than one term and then the distributive property was that if that the coefficient or whatever is multiplying the bracket gets multiplied to every term inside and that was the distributive property of multiplication now the distributive property of division is when I have multiple terms so I have x plus y and x plus y is being divided more than one term is being divided with a value and then simply what that means is that each term gets divided by that value in other words x gets divided with a and y gets divided with a now just to show you what this looks like a, in a little bit a different way is if we were to take x plus y divided by a now since there's more than one term divided by a we can write it using the divide line x plus y and instead of using brackets we can use a divide line to underline everything being divided over a and that simply means that x gets divided with a and that y gets divided with a this is the distributive property just illustrated in two different writing styles and uh, let's do a simple example simple example okay so a simple example would be something like 2x squared plus x gets divided with 2xy Okay. Now, as you can see, we've got two terms in the numerator, both being divided with a single term in the denominator. So what we do is we'll take each term and divide it with the denominator. So 2x squared gets divided with 2xy plus x gets divided with 2xy. And here we can now use our cancelling common factors method. So here we have an x a 2 and a 2 can cancel. Here we have two x factors in the numerator and one in the denominator. So that will cancel with one of the two. So there's only one left there. And here we have an x factor cancelling with the x factor. Remember that if, there's n if everything cancelled, there's still a 1 there. There will always be a 1 left. Okay. And now we see that our final answer is x over y plus x oh sorry not x the x cancelled one one over two y okay there we go this is an example of cancelling the common factors okay now you'd remember that we could have also done cancelling the factor x because it appears in all of the terms uh, we're allowed to do that and here we could have cancelled common factors because there's only one common, uh, sorry, one term in the numerator and one in the denominator. Let's look at another example. Okay, uh, let's look at the example. Uh, this one might be a little bit odd, but let's look at it. So we have 2x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. Now again many learners want to do this, they want to cancel those two but you're not allowed to, you can only cancel common factors in a fraction if they are common in every term and here we have two terms in the numerator, two in the denominator and there's definitely not an x in every term. Now here there's a sneak trick we want to do. What we'd like to do is we can of course say okay this is 2x divided by x plus 1 but we see we make no headway there's still not an x in every factor so we can't cancel so this way is not helpful we, we're not getting anywhere but one thing that we can do in here is we can rewrite this as x plus 1 that's the numerator okay but there were two x's so we must say oh there's still another x and there were two there, so there's still another one. So x plus 
2x plus 2 can be x plus 1 plus x plus 1. And in the denominator, we've got x plus 1. So actually what I did is I just somehow tried to manipulate the numerator so that I can have a whole x plus 1 term in the, uh, in the numerator. So now this can become, I can now kind of group these two together and group those two together. And then I can say this is x plus 1 divided. So I distribute the x plus 1 to the first two terms x plus 1 plus and then I distribute the x plus 1 to the next two terms okay and here we see we can now have this is 1 plus 1 and so in the end we have it as 2 and that's another way of using the distributive property of division to do a simply simplifying uh, a fraction I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you in the next topic where we are going to have a look at factorization. See you there.